Well hey friends, I am back today with the second half of the Life Giving Home book um, with Sarah and Sally Clarkson. We are talking about the November chapter and in this video we are going to talk about really practical ways to extend gratitude and to walk out some of the ideas that we've been learning about in the book. Um, two things before we get started. First, I don't know why my skin is looking so orange on camera. It's I don't know what's going on there. Um, and secondly, um, there Sally has a podcast, and it's incredible. Um, and it is called um, At Home with Sally, and it's wonderful. She, they're, they're, they are walking through this book right now. Sally's written lots of books, um, and her podcasts often um, go further into the books and right now they are going through the life giving home and the podcast is wonderful um, it's just as beautiful and inspiring as the book is so I would encourage you to look that up if you are a podcast listener excuse me um, so let's dive in because there's lots and lots of ideas and I want to share with you some of them um, let's get going okay so um, it says, in our home. So, uh, Sarah says, as with so many of the home's best, best rhythms, gratitude and generosity are habits that must be practiced day by day and year by year in the cadence of home life. We had the larger occasions of open house hospitality in which we shared the whole home and table, the holidays in which the giving of thanks was the central theme, but we also had the work-a-day work habits of kindness and the little mental disciplines of thanks, notes, meals, and the small acts of service that speak of love. In each instance, there was a conscious choice to make both gratitude and giving an integral part of our home life. So here are some of the things that she talks about. And the first is the feast of thanks, which is just another way to say Thanksgiving. Um, she says that Thanksgiving at the Clarksons um, begins with a big breakfast, never mind the big dinner to come, that's hours away. Um, in the morning, um, it's packed with preparation, and they always try to catch a bit of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, but she says, but we try to take time before the guests arrive to read aloud one of David's jubilant psalms, like Psalm 100 or 103 and list out, either together or in a moment of private silence, the reason for thanks that have marked our past year. Love that idea. Love that idea. If we had time, each prays his or her list out loud. If not, one of us says a prayer for the whole family. But by the time the doorbell rings, the turkey is nearly roasted, the table is set, and the rhythm of praise has already been established. And she goes ahead and talks about how um, they lay out the table. Um, she says, Our faithful oak table groans a bit as the extra leaves are laden with plates, the special occasion crystal, um, countless arrangements of candles and place cards for everyone. And I think that's so... Um, that's one of the special things about holidays is creating a beautiful table for your guests. Um, it signifies that this is special. And she talked about how they, um, as kids, would make the place cards. Um, and some of them still are lasting to this day. They're all grown adults now. Um, as the first guests arrive, we light the candles, put on some lilting Celtic music, and take off our aprons. Then we are ready for the feast. And the food itself, it's always fascinating to see what friends will bring, which family recipe we'll make. It's time on our way to our kitchen. But we always, no matter the amount of cooking required, include our own favorite dishes. Lots and lots of turkey, two kinds of dressing or stuffing, um, peas, uh, Lesseur brand peas, I believe it is, and usually an English trifle, guaranteeing leftovers for days. And this is an idea that I really like too. She said, before we leave the table, we pass a basket with dried corn kernels, one of the few traditions that has survived intact from my childhood days. Everyone takes five kernels, and for each one, shares something that fills his or her heart with thanks. The corn goes into a glass bowl as each one finishes, and before we know it, the bowl is filled with a beautiful golden pile, a visible reminder of God's goodness. And I love that they do five things and not just one, because sometimes we just go around the table and say one thing that we're thankful for, but I love that you need to think of five things, um, because sometimes we can think of one or two things really easily, um, and even though five is a small number, it still requires a bit of digging to think of those um, top five things that you're really thankful for um, over the past year. 
and prayer is the final is the finale of, of this special time. All are invited to speak their thanks to God aloud as we bow our heads for a time of contemplation with one person designated to close. When the Amen is spoken, we linger as long as we please, filling up the corners as hobbits do at the end of an excellent feast. And then they go for a walk um, after the Thanksgiving feast, um, and then comes pie, coffee, or tea, and maybe an old-fashioned hymn sing, or perhaps just having fun and relaxing with friends. We are not spiritually focused all the time. Um, finally, when not another bite can be eaten or no sound, we pack everyone up with leftovers and hugs. Daylight is usually waning when we stand at the front door to wave them off, thankful beyond measure for one more feast of grace. I love that. Um, and then, so another thing that they talk about is um, a harvest festival. So uh, she says that over the years they've enjoyed creating their own seasonal um, celebrations in the midst of each season. Um, and as the season progressed, we would gather food and we would gather food, pile up wood for the fireplace, and bring out our cozy coats, sweaters, and scarves. Um, we also typically plan some kind of harvest of a harvest festival is our way of keeping rhythm with older cult cultures in which the gathering in of crops and drawing in for winter was a time for great thanksgiving. Love that. <laughs> it was also great fun, something we all could look forward to. A harvest festival can mean many things, but for us it meant a last gala of outdoor fun with a bit of good natured competition and of course lots of feasting. So the outdoor festivities included pumpkin carving, potato sack races, foot races, egg tosses, and if the weather was warm enough, water balloon fights. Um, when they lived in Texas, they'd hitch up two horses, horses, <laughs> two horses to a buggy, and take people on hay rides. And she said that with the races and the competitions, there was always a round of prizes, food, candy, gift cards, and a small something for everyone. I love that idea, and I think that sounds so fun, um, just gathering your friends and family together for just kind of one last um, big hurrah for the fall season um, before, like if you live in a winter, a cold climate uh, where you get snow before the snow flies, um, and just gathering together and just celebrating all of the goodness um, that that has happened during that particular season and to say goodbye to to fall to harvest we get so excited it's fall time yay i think it feels like everybody's favorite season is fall i know that's not the case but um but just to properly send it off and to have that one more time where you can spend outdoors and um, doing all those fun fall things together i, I love that <laughs> So then she goes to talk about how they celebrate gratitude in everyday ways. So the couple um, things that I mentioned were specific large scale celebrations. These are ways that we can practice gratitude uh, throughout our everyday and some of them are just are small things but can mean so very much. So the first is meals for friends um, and she talks about how um, it was a regular occurrence when friends were sick. Uh, to bring meals for them, um, whether it was sickness or stress or they were just going through a really discouraging time. Um, she says, something I wanted my mom to do over and over was make a huge pot of some deeply comforting soup, potato cheese or homemade chicken and noodle, bake a big batch of fresh bread and some cookies or brownies and a pie, and pile it into a box with a bunch of fresh flowers. She always put a handwritten note in too, so that whoever was at the receiving end of that meal would know they were truly valued and deeply loved. I love the idea of giving meals to friends, and that is something that has been so on my heart for so long, is to um, just be able to, um, to have that in place and to spring into action when someone needs help or they're going through a rough time to bring them a meal. Um, I know growing up, people brought us meals at different points in time, um, and there really is such, um, such thanksgiving and such gratitude when it comes to somebody bringing you in a meal. Um, you know that they went out of their way. You know that they spent time and money and um, their resources on preparing a meal for you, even if it's just going to the grocery store and getting some Italian bread and um, a, a rotisserie chicken and a pre-made salad, they still had to go out of their way to get those preparations and bring them to you. And that gift of the time, of the sacrifice, and the forethought to think to even do that, I think is so 
overwhelmingly wonderful and good. And I think that if we as a group of women would um, pour into others, other families and other individuals um, with a meal like that, I think we could really change lives. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but I think there is so much intention that goes into that, um, that I think that you have the power to bless somebody on what seems like a small scale, but can really the impact be so, so great and so big. Um, and so I would encourage you to look for the people in your life um, who may need a meal. And I have a few thoughts and ideas, and I think there will come a future video about this whole topic because, like I said, it's really just something really heavy on my heart. Um, but think along those lines of, of blessing someone with a meal. Um, and then she talks about handwritten and other expressions. Um, and so the art of the handwritten note has grown out of favor, sadly, with the age of emails and texts, but there is still tremendous power in personal handcrafted missives. Um, and it's so true. I, um, when I was like in college, uh, like in college, when I was college age, um, this was before Facebook and um, barely anybody had cell phones. I'm, I think I saw some old. I'm going to be 30, 35. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to be 35 in a couple months. It just doesn't seem that way, I think. Maybe I'm only 34. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, wow. Back to reality. But when I was in that college age, um, I was in like a ministry training program. And I was on leadership, and I got just so many notes from different people on my team who just were so life-giving, and I have kept all of them. I have a couple shoe boxes filled with these notes, and um, I don't go through them often. Um, I did recently when I was doing a lot of um, organizing and cleaning and stuff. Um, but to see the things that people would say to me and an encouragement that they would give to me, just has carried me through. You can delete a text, you can delete a Facebook message, um, you know, those things, you get another one and they get pushed up and whoever, like, you can't, you can go back and look at them, but if you have an ongoing rapport with someone, those things get lost in translation. But a handwritten note or a letter stays with you and it has the power to, um, to just bless you for years if you if you hang on to that excuse me and so um, I would encourage you the Target dollar spot has beautiful cards um, Michael's has them as well if you don't have a Target near you um, Michael's craft store um, or even just Walmart they have beautiful stationery as well um, even if you wanted to get something like from Erin Condren with a personalized um, your personal monogram or your name on it uh, but to have something beautiful just set aside for that occasion of writing notes. When I'm, I have, um, I'm setting up my office and I've got my desk together. And one thing that I did is I stuck um, some thank you cards and just general blank cards right in the one of the top drawers of my desk so that have them very easy to access. Um, and I can pull out and write a note to somebody. Um, I don't have to go digging and rummaging for a card or something like that. I've, I've got them right there at my disposable disposal. So I would encourage you to do that. Go somewhere and, and find yourself a beautiful set of blank cards, um, maybe even a set of thank you cards, um, and be at the ready to write people notes. And even if it's just a quick line of encouragement, even if you haven't spoken them, to them in a while, um, to send to send those things off and, and to bless somebody in that way. Um, and so she says, there are endless ways to give. The key to choosing wisely is to pray for guidance and listen carefully. Consider the passion you have for particular issues or topics and invest in these with an open heart. Some of our chosen giving areas include the following. So friends and missions. Um, and they talk about how they've supported friends who um, are working independently in the mission field, um, both families and individuals. Um, We've had um, missionaries in my family, and um, and in praying in what you can send them, whether it's um, monetary or maybe they need um, 
supplies or something. We went on a missions trip to the Dominican Republic and we packed some suitcases with um, different supplies that the missionaries needed that we were working with. But one of the things that the missionary asked for was Dr. Pepper. And so each of us on the team who went carried a six pack of uh, Dr. Pepper on the plane for the missionary. So sometimes it's just in those, um, those things. Now granted, shipping Dr. Pepper or something really heavy like that can cost a lot. However, there may be other things that they need. Maybe um, it's a box of hair dye or maybe it's um, some concealer or blush. Um, I know those seem, things seem maybe trivial, um, but they can go a long way sometimes in making a woman feel beautiful and to um, feel like she's putting her best face forward. Um, another thing that she talks about is child sponsorship programs, and those are absolutely incredible. To sponsor a child to um, for education and for um, food and um, nourishment and stuff like that, like that's just such a wonderful thing. And the cost of just a couple of coffees a month can support a child in another country. She talks about shoe boxes for the homeless, and she says this is a great way to get kids involved in generosity, especially during the holidays. It involves taking shoe boxes, something that we all seem to have, and filling them with toys, treats, and school supplies, and most important, hygienic items for kids in homeless shelters. This project provides a direct opportunity for children to have a hands-on experience of giving. Um, and then there's some other things here. Just one more that I'll mention. Um, they talk about rescue ministries for young women, and they talk about an organization called the Exodus Road. Incredible organization, um, if you want to look it up. Um, they are doing incredible work helping um, women uh, who are entrenched in prostitution and sex trafficking, both in our country, like the United States, North America, um, and abroad. Um, and I've I've um, listened to Sarah May. Um, I've read her blog and followed her journey working with Exodus Road and going into the brothels and stuff. And it's just it's powerful. And that garbage is happening. And um, this ministry is saving saving women. Um, and so. If you feel your heart attached to a particular ministry, whether it's Exodus Road or, or something else, there's so many amazing organizations. Pray how you can get involved. Um, maybe it's just monetary, but maybe there's other things you can do, a missions trip or something of that nature, and um, just be praying on, on what you can do and how you can give um, of your time, your talent, your resources to, to bless others. And so lastly, they talk about a life of prayer. A simple but effective way to develop a grateful and generous hearts is prayer. Absolutely. Gathering regularly to pray for one another and for other people creates a habit of thinking compassionately and affirms God's hand at work in the world. When we children were young, my parents made sure to include us in their prayer times. Even if they lasted a while, affirming our roles in the prayers we offered as a family. Praying for the missionaries we supported, the children we sponsored through Compassionate International, and those we knew who were, who were going through difficulty helped us learn to see the needs of others in the world. And praying our thanks for God's good gifts helps us remember His gracious, gracious, graciousness towards us. Interestingly enough, we found the habit of regularly expressing our gratitude and our concerns to God actually made us more grateful and more determined to act generously on behalf of others. I think that's because regular prayer helps cultivate awareness, and awareness is key to both gratitude and generosity. We must learn how to nourish a heart that is keenly aware both of God's abundance as it comes to us and the needs of the world around us. The grace of home is that, we, that it is a place where we are deeply nourished and given the capacity to be givers in our own turn. That double rhythm of receiving it, then giving, the drawn breath of praise and its release in generosity creates the heartbeat by which we live lives rich in God's goodness, not just for ourselves, but for the world. Such a good chapter. Um, again, if you have not picked up this book, I just I really want to encourage you to do so. If you have found anything within any of these videos that just resonates with you, can I just tell you that in when you sit down with this book and read it, the words sink so much deeper into your heart and soul, and there's so much that I can't even get into on the video. Um, I highlight some things that really speak to me, but there's so much more within these pages that I, 
I, I can't get into. And I just want to encourage you, this book is fantastic. And this will actually, for me, I think, be a handbook for life. Um, I think it'll be something that I read continuously every month of the year because even as I go back, like I read this a couple, you know, a week or so ago, um, and even in going back now and in, um, in picking out some thoughts to share with you, I found so much more. So I would just encourage you to pick this up. It would be a great Christmas gift, something to put on your, your wish list. Um, it's fantastic. Again, make sure that you check out uh, Sally's podcast. It's called at home with Sally. Um, it's so good. Um, and let me see if there's anything else that I want to tell you before I sign off. I don't think so. Actually, I'm going to sneak something in here. I have it kind of filmed in another video that you'll probably see tomorrow, but I'm going to sneak it in here too for those of you who stuck through to the end. I am doing vlogmas this year. Um, I'm so excited about it. I've been thinking and planning and thinking about doing it since October. Um, I've been watching past vlogmas, um, of especially like um, Pretty Neat Living, Jen, um, her vlogmas, and I'm ex so excited to take you guys along with us. I've got some fun collaborations coming up with some other awesome YouTubers, um, and then I have some of my own stuff that I pre-filmed, but also I'm just going to take you along with us. We've got some fun things planned over the holidays, and I'm excited to document for my own self, um, but also to just invite you into our celebrations and in our holiday and um, come along and see what we're up to. So um, I think the videos uh, won't be super, they won't be super um, edited so that I can make sure that I can get them up daily. Um, they won't be like a whole lot of music and like, you know, they're going to be really super scripted -y, filmed -y kind of things. They're just going to be off the cuff and spliced together. I don't know. Um, and hopefully you enjoy them. So anyways, I'm excited. I hope you guys enjoy this book. I would love to hear your thoughts below. Let me know what you're you're doing. Tell me about your traditions, your um, things that you are doing for Thanksgiving and to celebrate uh, thanks and giving this month um, and things that you're grateful for. Leave me your comments below because I really love to connect with you down there um, in the comment section. Um, you guys are amazing and I can tell you honestly that um, you guys are so life-giving to me, and I appreciate so much that you spend your time here. It means the world to me. I know that time is your most precious gift, and the fact that you spend it here means so much. So, thank you guys. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will see you really soon. Bye, guys.